right, here we are. In today's video, we're going to learn how to resize images. Pretty simple, pretty quick, and pretty easy using the solutions or DB theme uh, module here. And so here you go. So what I usually always try to teach is number one, have the back end open, which is the dashboard look, may look similar to this. Uh, if you don't have this open, you, what you want to do is build on the front end and that will bring up another instance or even preview that works too. And that opens up a new tab. And this is the actual temp page that I just had. Temp page. I just copied a page from my existing website, which happens to be my about page. So here, first thing you want to do is if I want to change this image or add more images or insert images anywhere in here, a few things we want to make sure we do is number one is enable the visual builder. And once the visual builder is enabled, we have the handles. For example, we've got our modules here, which is the sections, the rows, and the actual modules. Now, going here, the first thing we want to do is if you want to change an image or add an image, just click on in, in the space around here and you want to look for those handles, those brown, those little handles that are here, right here. And what you can do if you like the way this image is, is a couple ways to do this. The first thing you do is you can hit the double rectangles here, which is to copy and it will copy an image, right? Or if you wanted to add something different, right? You can simply add or put, you know, put something in the plus button here and that will bring up the image module, uh, not just the image module, but the module, which will have a bunch of other types of options for your contact forms, you know, gallery, logins, menus, a whole bunch of things that you could use or choose from. So from here, what you do is what I typically do is what I type in image and it's pretty intuitive. So you click image and there's your image. Come over to here, hit the tool menu. And let's just say I wanted to add one of these images in here. For example, I'll say I wanted to add in creating your own YouTube videos. That image would now be put there. So if I wanted to change the image, I would simply come over here, change the image. Changes the image. Same thing here. You'd hit the save button, click on the image. And a couple ways you can do this, if you just want to do it really quick, you can double click on the image. Brings up the image setting box, gear, or double click. And there's your images to potentially put in. That puts it there. And of course, with the images, you can have a bunch of options which for example is under design. And you'll notice that this one, for example, is the, see this box that's around here? That means it's justified to the left-hand side. So if you double click on it, and it comes over here to alignment, you'll notice it's justified to the left. If I wanna put it in the center, and then I hit save, come back over here, you'll notice that these are the same length or with a cross, pixel wise. Again, if I wanted, this is, this is filling up the whole image. Again, it, there's a lot of interesting things you can do with the images if you want to be more creative and more design savvy. Again, you can align them in certain ways, okay? You can do sizing, spacing, you can put a border around it. Uh, and this is kind of rounded corners. So once this is locked, well, in other words, the chain is not broken, if you do corners and you just basically click these, it'll do all four corners. Notice how the corners are changing roundness from square, all right? But if you break the chain, okay, and you can do one at a time, you'll notice that one gets more exaggerated. See the difference? Then if, of course, you go back there, now they're all at 29. That's just one more way you can do things. You can put borders on them, you can make the borders have widths. So if you did this one right here and you clicked up with the border, okay. And then of course you can change the colors of the borders. Okay. You can change the style, dashed. Okay, you'll see these as you play around with these things. Pretty interesting and pretty good stuff. Box shadows, if you want that little glare, if you want something to show up a little bit more. And again, you can make these more pronounced or not 
by making them the shadow, you know, that type of stuff. You'll notice that the shadow gets deeper and darker all around here. Okay. And of course, the vertical position, you can make that kind of, see how literally it goes like that. And then, of course, the blur makes it more blurry, more pronounced, more sharp, more crisp. Okay. And I kind of like the settings like this when it looks neat like that. And more in the center, you know, that type of thing. Um, you can do, again, spread stretch, which goes across. You can do the shadow color. So if you wanted like a red color, I prefer the black or the gray, actually. Now, here's an interesting thing, too. If you're on a black, okay, and you want different types of blacks or grays, it gives you the spectrum that you can now use or choose from. Filters. This, I don't usually mess with these too often, but you can mess with the colors of things. Like say you didn't like it to be its original blue here or kind of a teal green. You can definitely change the hue and it won't change the picture, but it will change the hue of it. I wouldn't recommend doing that too often. I'd rather preferably do it in Photoshop bring it in and then upload it that way because it may render itself differently on different devices like a mobile device versus a computer. Of course, invert is making like a negative. Opacity is what it is. It makes it less, um, you know, opacity. It makes it like see-through. Of course, blur, blended mode, all those things. Transform, this is kind of a neat thing too. If you wanted to um, transform things in a sense, right now it's locked. Uh, you could literally change these things and make them skew, right? You can do a, a lot of neat things with this. Uh, you can transform the image in a lot of ways, you know, uh, but you have to unbreak these things also. And then you have to save them. And it does kind of put like an angle on it. All right. The automation factor, this is when you load the page. Um, it'll fade in, it'll slide, it'll bounce, it'll roll, fold, flip, and zoom. This has got nothing on it right now, but if we say we did the slide, okay. Now you notice the transform right there. That's how it came in, very weird looking, all right? And it slid into that. So if we want this back to zero, we don't want to mess with that. And we went back to here. At 100%, bring this back down to 100%. And then do the automation, which is already there. Say we wanted it to fold. Okay, we want it to flip. Bounce. Roll. Okay. And this basically is, now we saved it here. You come up down to the purple box. Save your additions now to see what this looks like you simply exit out of your builder and there it is that's what it spun out if you notice it spun that was that effect that you put in there so it's pretty neat you know that's kind of a neat thing uh, if you like that stuff you know that's kind of neat but you can do and have a lot of flexibility with this you can do a lot of neat things with them uh, like i said it's just pretty neat if you want to add more things Oh, for example, if this, this is my little quick bio about how I am and who I am and all that stuff about me. But you can simply just click on these things as you're in the visual builder to change the text. I know you how to do I know you know how to do this, but there's some really neat features that you know about here. For example, if you just got rid of all this. All right. And then you wanted to add another feature like the accordion. This is kind of a neat feature also. So basically each time you create one, okay, you can have tabs and each one of these tabs, you'd have more text that goes inside there. So for example, this, your title goes here. This could be something like test page one. This would be test page two. Test page two. 
And you'll notice that each one has a different label, different settings. But when you get through these, so these can be like, you know, um, something that is going to be folding in on itself. And I'll show you the effect in a second. So come out of this. Save changes. Now you'll notice I just kind of messed that up a little bit. I, I should have done something like save it down here. But because it knows that I didn't save it when I went to click out of visual editor, it reminded me, do I want to discard an exit or save an exit? Of course, I want to save. And this little spinny thing here is telling me that it's going to save. There's the effect we put on. Now this again is the neat thing. Now this will fold up to look like this when I click on this one and vice versa for the other ones too. Kind of a neat effect. So I encourage you to keep playing and keep exploring. It gets really fun and exciting. And maybe you have the web design bug. All right, if you have any questions, shoot me an email, leave me a comment, and I will make another video to help you right along. All right, Ken McMillan signing up. Take care.